Hello, everyone. We're Matt and Lisa Jacobson. And this is Faithful Life Podcast, Marriage Weekend Edition, where every Friday we take just a few minutes to talk about one simple way for you to enjoy a better weekend together. Hey, everyone. We are on the front end of that awesome weekend you're going to have together. And we had a big week, didn't we? Yeah, we just got back from Arkansas. We were talking with the wonderful people over there at Family Life Radio. They were interviewing us for our recently released books, 100 Ways to Love Your Husband, 100 Ways to Love Your Wife, 100 Words of Affirmation Your Husband Needs to Hear, and 100 Words of Affirmation Your Wife Needs to Hear. It was a really good interview. We really enjoyed being with those people. And they've got an amazing, wonderful marriage ministry down there. Well, marriage and parenting, I'd say, family Mm -hmm. life. Yeah, both. And we'll let you know when that interview is going to be aired. We don't have a date yet, but when we do, we'll make sure and let you guys know about that. Absolutely. But here we are on the front end of the weekend, and we're going to talk about something that never happens in your marriage, right? Hmm. Yeah. What's that? Angry outbursts. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Okay. All those angry angry wives and their outbursts. (laughs) Actually... We're talking mostly, I mean, it goes both ways, but we're talking mostly about those angry outbursts that men can have against their wives. Mm -hmm. Oh, why do we take such liberties with the people that we love the most? But listen, angry outbursts are a real destroyer in marriage. The Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Well, how about just don't be wrathful at all, or the sun will go down on you sleeping alone. Oh, oh. (laughs) Because Because anger is so powerfully destructive in marriage. And you don't like sleeping alone, do you? Right. (laughs) So don't let wrath, uncontrolled anger, have a place in your relationship or you will find yourself with the blankets all to yourself on the couch. No, it's so true. An angry, explosive spirit is, it's just repulsive to women. It is so, so hard on them. Like I I just don't, sometimes I think men don't realize how. I know that's true. I know they don't realize. Hmm. Okay, yeah, just how it just how it affects us. It it just more than you than you possibly could realize how hurtful and damaging it is. And I mean, not only that, but it's unacceptable to God. It's sin. It's not just a way of expressing yourself. It's 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 just wrong. You know, and, you know, and women, women just have a different meter when it comes, when it comes to angry, angry outbursts. outbursts. I think that's true. They, they, yeah, yeah, I'm sure of it because, because Lisa, Lisa has, has, there have been times in our marriage where Lisa, where Lisa says, oh, you're, oh, you're yelling and you're so angry. angry. <laughs> I'm going, uh, I can talk way louder than this. <laughs> I'm not yelling. At least so it, true. It, it, wasn't it wasn't yelling to me. Yeah. But that's with my ears yeah. and my filters and my way of hearing it. And I don't feel like I'm like super sensitive. I'm not like, it's not like you have to walk around eggshells, you know, walk on eggshells around me or anything like that. But but yeah, I, I do think that that it's it's worse than you maybe realize or harder on us than you realize. Right. So we just want to encourage the men, and I especially just want to encourage you to not use your own standards for what's yelling when you're deciding whether or not you're talking too loud, too harshly, too angrily, or too pointedly with your wife. It's really how she's hearing it, and that's what matters to her, not your assessment of how you're talking. So her 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 meter her her scale is different than yours and i just say accept her scale so that you're not crossing that line with you know and i think sometimes men also think well because i'm not yelling i'm not raising my voice i'm not expressing my anger but but there are so many other ways of expressing anger through your tone through the word choice like that and or even just your eyes like you know we can see that anger in your eyes and it it has it has the same effect frankly so we're going to talk about the way to get past this way of being, right? We're going to talk about that a little bit. But before we do, we need to understand the Bible's perspective on the person who walks in anger, on the angry person. So here's what the Bible has to say. Uh, If you're that angry person, you're a fool if you give full vent to your anger. You're a fool. Ooh, fool. Isn't that a little harsh? You know, it's not. It's exactly what the Bible calls the man who blasts others with his anger. In Proverbs 29, 11, it says, a fool vents all his feelings or gives full vent to his anger. Do what the world says and what your flesh desires in the moment of emotional intensity and be a fool. But you not only be a fool if you do that, you're going to be a destructive fool because that's what anger does. It destroys and keep it up. Eventually, you will be a lonely fool. So that's the negative side of this deal. But there are some incredibly encouraging facts that we get to consider right now about this business of the angry outburst. So here's fact number one. 
it doesn't have to happen. It didn't have to happen. See, it's not something that has to happen. Number two, it's a choice. That angry outburst, it was a choice. And number three, and here's the best news of all, with God's help, you can control your response to whatever happens. You literally don't have to have another angry outburst in your relationship. You know, I think sometimes we act as if our anger is just like totally out of our control, just sneaks up on us and pounces on the situation. But as you were saying, this isn't true. Anger is within our control. You choose to allow yourself to become angry and you can choose not to. Hey everybody, Christmas is coming up and I think I know something about you. You haven't figured out what you're going to get for everybody for Christmas. <laughs> That's right. But listen, if you have kids or if you know somebody that has kids, have we got something for you? We absolutely love this audio adventure series from Jonathan Park. It has been just awesome for our kids. Yeah, all of our kids have listened to Jonathan Park Adventures. The oldest kids uh, who are now grown and out of the house listen to them, right down to our younger kids who are still listening to them, actually. So it's been a family favorite of ours. And our older kids have gone on to say, you know what, we learned so much and enjoyed those adventures. They still have fairly fond memories of sitting around listening as a family. What these are as audio adventures, they're literally fully produced stories. It's like a movie for your ears because it's got sound effects, it's got uh, voices of the actual actors. So it's not just an audio book where somebody's reading the text, right, but yeah. it's actually a story. It's an adventure that's unfolding. They're full of excitement, they're full of danger, and they're full of a couple of other things they're f that parents love. They're full of education. There's all kinds of scientific information in there. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of biblical information, information on the natural world, a biblical worldview. You never have to worry about what your kids are going to be receiving. It comes from a, a, a Bible-based perspective, and they really are exciting. Our kids absolutely. What are some of the things you love best about? Oh, I think I appreciated that they are faith building. And so it wasn't just us imparting our faith, but they could hear it in, a, in this story setting, but still very truth filled. Um, I think it's so much better than screen time for everybody to listen to something together. In our case, our family, our kids all listen to it together. But um, so I liked that. Um, I appreciated that it was respectful of family values, of biblical values. And it's, that's increasingly hard to find these days. Um, I'm Absolutely. It's one of those things that a parent's always concerned about. What are my kids going to get from what they're from the input that that uh, they're getting from their entertainment? And these are just right down the line, something you can be really, really secure in as a parent. And whether the kids realize it or not, they're actually getting education through this whole thing. They're learning all kinds of things. Our kids learned about dinosaurs, about history, about biblical things that I didn't even know of. They say, oh, we learned about that in Jonathan Park. I thought, no yeah. way, that's really cool. No, it's really the full package and your kids really will love them. And there's something great that we want to tell you about relative to the price of them. If you just pay the full retail, a little pricey, but right now there's a couple of things going on. First of all, they're 50% off for the holiday season, but there's something even better than that. If you use the code Faithful Life, we've got a special arrangement with Jonathan Park. If you use the code Faithful Life at checkout, you'll get an additional 20% off that 50%. They're super it's a screaming affordable. Deal. <laughs> it's a screaming deal. And the best of all, it's a totally no risk offer. If you don't like it, you will. Uh, then you can return it. You won't. Uh, any <laughs> Anyway, so you really should check it out. These come with the strongest recommendation that Lisa and I can possibly offer. So, And they're perfect gifts for every young kid you know. And this special sale is only good through uh, the day after Thanksgiving, just so you know. It's a kind of a one-time thing right now. Yeah, the special 20% off yeah. thing. Yeah, you've got to go now if you want it. It is going to end, um, I think, what, the 27th? Yes, that's right. Exactly. That's last so, All right. And we'll put even a comment in the show notes as well, just to remind you. But check it out. Your kids will love you, and you're going to love us for telling you. That. <laughs> That's, That's right. That's the main happen. thing. <laughs> All right. Now, there are some things in life that call for anger. You know, it's, it's not like you're not supposed to have the anger emotion. The Bible doesn't teach that. But for those situations, the Bible says, be angry and don't sin. That's in Ephesians 4.26. When it comes to your relationship with your wife, however, unleashing your anger is almost never appropriate. I'm going to say almost because there might be some danger situation where you're trying to address. Right. But, okay. but, but it's just not something that we should have in our in the category of a legitimate way of communicating. It's not okay, and it is virtually and almost 
never appropriate. And what we men need to understand, and we've just got to get this, we've got to understand it, we've got to let ourselves believe it right in our souls. Our angry spirit is going to bring a harvest of pain and destruction. And frankly, anger is responsible for many divorces. You know, and I could just hear you know, Baba saying, hey, the Bible says that Christians can divorce only for adultery. Well, you know what, my friend, that may be true in terms of the Bible's perspective on divorce. But there are many women who have walked away from this experience of feeling attacked and under siege in their own marriages. And they didn't wait until the, the guy committed adultery, but they weren't going to live under that attack anymore. And the foolish husband says in his heart, and guys, I've been foolish because I've used my own meter of what is, you know, angry. I've, I've allowed that to be my standard of what is and what isn't anger instead of how my wife is receiving it. So I've been this guy. I don't want to make it sound like, hey, I walk on water and all you other schlubs who get angry, you know, stop doing that, right? I've actually done this where I've used my own meter and I've said, no, nah, I wasn't really that angry, right? That's the foolish husband. The foolish husband says in his heart, hey, I only raised my voice a little and it was for good reason, right? I had my reasons. But your reason will never be good enough to win back your wife's heart. If you're walking that way, your reason will never be good enough to win back your wife's heart. Yeah, we hear stories on this all the time, people coming to us. Um, and when this happens, it's just not a lot of comfort when, you know, the woman, the wife says goodbye and closes the door. Because wives have, are they're driven away by the, that anger. And a lot of times it's even over time. So like she just slowly starts pulling her heart back to, to, to protect it, right? So she may be physically present in the marriage, but now she is withdrawn from you and closing her heart incrementally over time. This is such a common thing in marriages. I'm a marriage coach. I have clients around the country that I work with on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And, and by the way, if anybody's interested in that, you can go to uh, faithfulman.com and you can look up the um, marriage coach submission form. You can write me a little a note there on, on your interest, if you have interest. But what I find is it's a very common thing in Christian marriages, and somehow we justify this in, our, in ourselves, and it's such a huge mistake, and it's so true that you're really just closing your wife's with each, each angry outburst. Hey, maybe, maybe the wheels are on the wagon today, and she served dinner, and the kids got picked up from soccer, and hey, it all looks like it's going well, but her heart is closing, and you're allowing that, you're justifying that anger and you're saying it's okay, and it wasn't that bad, but your wife's heart is closing, and that's on you. You're responsible for that. She's not responsible for that. You are. And frankly, there's a lot of ways to be angry. You know, you don't have to be out on the lawn throwing the, the, the lawn chairs across. Right, yeah, no. You know, across the yard. There's a lot of ways to be angry. Some men have mastered the silent explosion. Oh, yeah, that's a good way to put okay, it. Okay, right? Some wives can get so frustrated at their their husband's sullen, quiet anger. It might involve fewer decibels, but it's just as destructive as the other kind of anger. And if you have kids, <laughs> your anger will annihilate your relationship with them too. And you know something? That's exactly as it should be. If that's how you're walking, then your kids should withdraw from you. The Bible actually even says that. In Proverbs 22, 24, the Bible says, do not associate with an angry man, right? So the person who's allowing these outbursts, you're driving people away, you're driving your wife away, you're driving your kids away, and they're doing the right thing. The Bible says, don't associate with the angry man. Yeah, nothing good will ever come to your marriage from the spirit of anger. So just say goodbye to it and save yourself from a world of trouble, a future of loneliness, and from destroying what your marriage could have been. Now, I know that there's some out there listening. They're going, man, I've blown it. I even blew it recently. What do you do if you've blown it? What if you've hurt your wife this way? What if you've hurt your children this way with this harsh spirit, angry countenance, your stabbing words? Well, you have to repent. And repentance isn't, I'm sorry. 
Biblical repentance means I'm turning from that sin. You've got to believe that you you can turn from it, that you have the power to walk in righteousness with your wife, kindness with your children, uprightness before God. You can do it, but you've got to repent before God, and you've got to humbly repent and ask forgiveness of your wife. Now, if you've done this over and over and over and over again, she's just not going to believe you. So I would just say to that person, how about you just start walking in the Spirit and leave anger behind? But there can be a start for you walking the right way. You can start that. You can start that right now if you're some, one of those people that struggles with this. And don't forget that proverb that says, a soft answer turns away wrath. Kind words are like honey to the soul. So restoration follows where humility, repentance, and real change have happened. Soft, gentle words increase your wife's hearing capacity. And for some, that's going to be over time because of how you walked. But just know that, and maybe this isn't even how you walk, but maybe a time or two you've been tempted to just let it go and just be angry. Don't do it. There's nothing good that will ever come of these angry outbursts. So, hey, sometimes Marriage Weekend is about avoiding certain behaviors as opposed to just embracing certain behaviors, but you will have a better, closer, more loving relationship if you banish anger from the communication that you have with your wife and kids. Folks, have an awesome weekend together. All right. God bless.